citizens, a vote for me is a vote against pills and buttons and conveyor belt transportation. A vote for him is a vote against progress. The crowd is cheering me. Oh, no, the crowd is cheering me. Hello, crowd. Hello, crowd. Me. Me. Let's listen and see which one they're really cheering for. As Theater 5 brings us a story called The City Manager. Jed Ormsby, look, I'm the city manager of the pride of the Midwest, this city of felicity, and I don't care how things seem at this moment, I'm the best city manager any city ever had. Hmm. The city council gave me a free hand and I've used it. If things seem to have turned out badly right this moment, I shouldn't be blamed. It's all your fault. Oh. You were the only member of the city council who was against me from the start. I didn't vote with the others, you know. I know. You're against me. Oh, if I understand your ideas correctly, I'm against your ideas, not you. It's the same thing. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I think that's what I'm against. The notion that you and your ideas are all one and the same. The personal emotion you bring to city managing. You're one of these knockers, aren't you? I don't think so. One of these grouches. Maybe. One of these demagogues. Look, what I am is a member of the city council who is interested in how you propose to run the city. Efficiently. Humanly? I said efficiently. You've taken some people off welfare. You'll see. They'll all have jobs. It would have been nice if they had had the jobs before you cut off their checks. You're a demagogue. Hmm. If you'll examine my records, you'll find that very few city managers have had the modern, up-to-the-minute technical training that I've had. I am interested in people. I am interested in efficiency. And that's good for people, whether people know it or not. You've made all the elevators in the city automatic. Of course. It's more efficient. It has put some elevator operators out of work. And it's kept all timid people from going to see their friends in high buildings. There will be full employment in time. Every man will have a job, and he darn well better work at it, too. As for timid people, they better get over being timid. So... That's your answer? Yes. All right. And what's going to be your next step? I'm going to tear down the homes that people in the city live in. I can't believe you. You mean the tenements? Tenements and middle-class homes alike. What? I'm going to tear them down. And where are the people going to live? In new homes. But until the new homes are built. In tents? Ah, you must be kidding. Now, wait a minute. They'll be living in tents for only a couple of weeks. It's going to take only a couple of weeks to rebuild the city completely? Now, naturally, I'm going to do it by areas, one area at a time. On the new construction, I'll be using modern prefabricated units. I'll pay labor on an incentive plan. You mean a speed-up? That's the demagogue's word for it. <laughs> I'll pay labor on an incentive plan, and the people won't have to live in tents very long at all. What if it rains? We'll have floors in those tents. What kind of houses will these prefabricated things be? I'm interested in what kind of housing people get. <laughs> we don't call them houses anymore. You... What do you call them? Living areas. All of them alike, I suppose. Of course. Why should one person have a more efficient living unit than another? Don't you believe in democracy? I always thought so. I wish you'd keep an open mind. Think of how wonderful it's going to be. Every living unit in every living area will be completely automated. Oh, should I turn handsprings now? My housewives training course is going to produce the most efficient machine-tending housewives any city in the world has ever had. Well, that sounds mighty sexy. They'll be able to clean the house by setting a dial and pushing a button. They'll be able to cook a dinner, sew on zippers... Or darn socks in the same way. Have you ever heard of individuality? Ah, <laughs> there I have you. Every demagogue prates about how people like me eliminate individuality. Well, let me tell you, 
The housewife in our living units will be able to change the pictures and drapes at will according to 36 different numbered color scheme preferences processed to the dial in a home decoration and ornamentation machine. Phew. <laughs> You're impressed, aren't you? Well, in a certain kind of way, I am impressed, yes. Actually, these women won't have too many hours of drudgery, will they? Mm -hmm. Not with everything automated. Do I dare hope that you have not taken care of what they will do with their spare time? Do you think that I would leave them stranded like that? They will spend long hours every day in the recreation area. What is in the recreation area? Television. You'd like my vote, wouldn't you? Naturally. You haven't got it. <laughs> Well, that's the kind of obstructionism I was up against. But I had been given fair warning, so I called in the chief of police. You wanted me, Mr. Dennison? Yes, chief. You know we've got one grouch on the city council, don't you? <laughs> Jed Ormsby. That's right. Now, I think he's going to stir up trouble, and so I order you to augment the police force. Draft the biggest and healthiest young men we have in the city. Fine. Uh, can I teach them uh, <clears throat> special tactics? You know better than to ask me a question like that. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, the answer is yes, and you never asked me. Well, fine. It was a wise move, augmenting the police force. I never was able to prove that Jed Ormsby was the agitator behind the meat and potatoes butch. But when the putsch occurred, I was glad we had so many cops. Mr. City Manager. The City Council has upheld my order that all citizens shall dine on the all the vitamins you need pills. Now, sir, I give you one chance. Step to the window and speak to those people. Tell them to stop howling and get back to their places of work. No, sir. Chief. Yes, sir. Immobilize this man. Yes, sir. He's not dead. Paralyzed. Now, about that crowd out there... My men have infiltrated the crowd, sir. All right, men! Very satisfactory, Chief. The police department's prompt and efficient handling of the meat and potatoes putsch caused a most idyllic tranquility to descend upon the city. Suddenly the people knew that they were the happiest people in the world. I do not say this idly. I took a scientific poll of their attitudes, using policemen as pollsters. The people all said that they loved our various programs. Of course, Jed Ormsby still complained. Now, what's this that you're doing to the roads? Automating them. I don't remember that we had any vote on this at any meeting of the city council. Oh, yes, we did. Three months ago, the council voted to authorize the city manager to improve the roads in and out of town. I see. And you've interpreted this to mean that you dig up all the roads and put huge conveyor belts in their places. Exactly. Now, look, I want to be fair. Oh, I'm I certain you do. I would just like to have you explain the advantage of these conveyor belts. I'm happy to. You may have noticed that on these belts, every 30 feet, there is a fairly high, hard rubber bunker. Yes, I noticed that. If a person wants to drive out of town, he steers his car to a position between two of these bunkers, turns off the engine, and sits there while the conveyor belt carries him and his car to the turnpike. Why can't he just drive to the turnpike just as he always did? This way, it's more efficient. Firstly... Everyone moves at the same democratic speed. <sighs> Do you realize that you have blighted the, the, the spiritual life of this community? I deny that. You know very well that right in the middle of the city, I've built an imposing, abstract, expressionist church of your choice. That's not what I mean. The people in this city are bored. Impossible. The television sets play in the recreation area 24 hours a day. What's that sound? Explosion. Well, you don't seem perturbed. 
Are, are these explosions ordered by you? Yes. Could you let a mere member of the city council in on what they mean? They're the beginnings of the excavations. What excavations? Well, surely you're aware that last month I had the efficiency of this city assessed by Efficiency Engineering Incorporated? No, yes, I was aware of those snoops running in and out of people's homes and places of business and making notations in notebooks. But what has all that got to do with these explosions? Efficiency Engineering Incorporated recommended that we have 65% of the populace living and working underground. Underground? Exactly. There are fewer distractions underground. And of course, Jed Ormsby rushed out and warned the people. There are always those who are willing to listen to demagogues. I sat in my office with the window open, listening to Jed's harangue. Hello, citizens. I don't know which of you have been chosen, but none of you wants to live underground, do you? All right. We'll fight this thing. We have got to recognize that the power of our opponents is great. It may be that we'll lose the struggle, and that 65% of you wonderful people will be forced into the bowels of the earth like mold. They'll tell you that it will be light and airy down there, and maybe it will be. But please be prepared. If we lose this fight, if you are forced underground, take gas masks with you, so that in case of disaster, you'll be able to breathe while you're finding your way above ground. Such was the absurdity of Jed Ormsby's plea to the mob. The police force was, of course, prepared to deal with any disorders. But as we went ahead with our excavations, the populace did not riot. Uh, but the riot did come, of course, on the day when 65% of the populace had to take up residence in those tunnels. They'll have to be immobilized, Chief. Give the signal. Yes, sir. All right, man! The police carried the immobilized people into the tunnels. All of them had gas masks. And I decided that if they felt better with the gas masks, I'd let them keep them. <laughs> Citizens are children, and in unimportant matters, it's just as well to be permissive. When the effect of paralysis had worn off, the underground cadre produced most efficiently. At this point, I felt that Jed Ormsby should be dealt with. You sent for me, sir? Yes, Chief. It seems to me that you should arrest Jed Ormsby. I'll do it if you order me to, but I'd advise against it. Just why? Oh, we can handle the people. I think we'll prove that. That's correct. Well, Ormsby is the only leader they have. And to tell you the truth, he's a force for moderation. Moderation? Ormsby? Yes. He's always talking to them about sticking to the letter of the law. Now, there are some who don't want to do that. Those saboteurs we had to cope with, for example. The people listen to Ormsby, not to them. But if we arrested him... I see what you mean. But Ormsby has to be dealt with somehow. Oh, of course he does. Ormsby should have an accident, and there shouldn't be a policeman within a mile of him. That's very sound thinking, Chief. Thank you. An accident. An accident to Ormsby. I liked it. And I decided to take the first opportunity to put him in a position to have an accident. But no opportunity presented itself for about six months. And then... All right, and what is this newest harebrained scheme of yours? You'll have to be more specific, Ormsby. Something about control. 
I can't be more specific than that because you're not any more specific in your report to the city council. Apparently, you mean master control. All right, then, master control. Now, what is it? What does it sound like? It's a control panel which enables one man to run the whole city. Mm Mm-hmm. You've kind of automated the automation, is that it? That might be a way of putting it. Well, I'm still a member of the city council, and I want to see this thing. Now, where is it? It's 200 feet below the city. Is there a man there now? Yes. He's running the city? Exactly. I want to see it. You're entitled to. Come on. I took him to the special self-service elevator, which sped down the shaft toward master control. On the way down, we talked. I think I'm going to launch one last big campaign against you, Denison. Is that so? Maybe. It's either that or else in some way sacrifice myself to the liberation of the people. This is the empty bombast of a demagogue. Possibly. I'm not always sure myself of the purity of my own motives. It's refreshing to hear you admit it. Yes, isn't it? What I dislike so about you is that you're never uncertain of yourself. I haven't been wrong yet. Production is up 28 and 3 tenths percent. You've been wrong every step of the way. I don't know anything about this master control thing, but I'll bet it's wrong, too. Well, we'll see. Here we are. Right this way. Hello there, Ralph. Hello, Mr. Dennison. This is Mr. Jed Ormsby, member of the city council. I am going to show him the master control panel. Very well, sir. You, Rolf, you can take the hand car and go over to the underground recreation area. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, why can't he stay here? Do as I say, Rolf. Uh, thank you very much, sir. I, uh, I didn't want him here. You and I may be having arguments. <laughs> I see your point. Uh, is this the master control panel? Yes. You see that button? Yes. That's for the conveyor belt highways. And this one is for all the elevators in the city. You mean it supplies power to them? That's right. Here's one for the tracks and the tunnels. This is for all the refrigeration in the city. Mm -hmm. Here's one for the air conditioning in the underground domicile units. Hmm. All this is very big. All the elevators, all the air conditioners, all the tracks, all the roads. These are very big concepts indeed. You're very good at big things. You're no good at little things. What do you mean? Well, look there at that cable. On the end of it are two prongs that go into that plug, right? Right. And that plug is screwed into that electric socket, right? Right. And from that socket comes all the power to run everything in the city, right? Right. Well, suppose we remove the prong from the plug. No, 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 now put that back. Oh. Everything's gone dark. Don't worry, I've got a flashlight. See? But nothing in the city is running now. I know. That's just my point. Now, suppose instead of putting the prongs back in the plug, we unscrew the plug. No, no. Now, don't do that. Now, don't worry. Don't worry. I've got the plug in my hand. I've got a good grip on it. I haven't lost it. We can get everything running again in a minute. Now, you insane fool. I was going to wait to kill you, but you. (laughs) I've had enough from you. He fell into the cab of the elevator as I took the lead pipe from my pocket and hit him with it. And as he fell, the plug dropped from his hand. It rolled. By the light of his flashlight, I saw it roll to a crack between the shaft and the floor of the elevator. Oh, the plug dropped down into the shaft. And here I am. The elevator won't run until I put the plug in the socket, but I can't get the plug till I get the elevator up a little in the shaft. But I can't get the elevator up in the shaft until I get the plug. And the air's been cut off. It's all right for those fools with their gas masks, but... But here I am, and the air is going. The roads have stopped moving towards us or away from us. Nobody will come to help. I I can't breathe. Flashlight's gone out. It's it's dark, cold, airless. I'm choking. Help! Help! The 
Theater 5 has presented The City Manager, written by Robert Senadella and directed by Ted Bell. In the cast, Leon Janney, Owen Jordan, Charles Randall, and Jack Hurdle. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlasdotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.